Gloria Swanson was a woman of hidden romances and powerful lovers, from secret trysts with industry titans to affairs that defied societal norms. Here are the secrets that the cameras never captured, the true story of a star whose life was as dramatic off-screen as it was on, the rise of a silent film star. Born on March 27, 1899 in Chicago, Illinois, Gloria Swanson moved frequently during her childhood, spending time in Puerto Rico and Florida. In 1914, at age 15, she started working as an extra in films at s &A Studios in Chicago. Her career took off when she signed with Max Sennett's Keystone Studios in 1916. At Keystone, Swanson quickly became a leading lady in comedy shorts. She starred in Teddy at the Throttle, 1917, showcasing her comedic talent. Her big break came in 1919, when she signed a contract with Paramount Pictures. Under the direction of Cecil B. DeMille, she transformed into a glamorous star. She starred in successful films like Don't Change Your Husband, 1919, Male and Female, 1919, and Why Change Your Wife, 1920. Swanson's on-screen presence was magnetic. Known for her dramatic roles and luxurious fashion, her performance in Male and Female included a memorable scene where she posed with a real lion, cementing her status as a daring actress. By the early 1920s, she was one of Hollywood's highest-paid stars, earning $8,000 a week, an astronomical sum at the time. Her personal life was as dramatic as her film roles. In 1919, she married actor Wallace Beery, but the marriage ended in divorce in 1922. Swanson described the relationship as abusive in her autobiography. She then married Herbert K. Somborn, president of Equity Pictures Corporation, in 1925. They had a daughter, Gloria, but the marriage ended in 1930. Swanson's career reached new heights with films like The Affairs of Anatol, 1921, and Beyond the Rocks, 1922, where she starred alongside Rudolph Valentino. These films solidified her status as a leading lady of the silent era. By 1925, she was working with director Eric von Stroheim on Queen Kelly. The film was highly anticipated but plagued with production issues and never completed in its intended form. Despite the setback with Queen Kelly, she continued to thrive. In 1928, she earned an Academy Award nomination for her role in Sadie Thompson. Her portrayal of the complex character received critical acclaim and highlighted her versatility as an actress. Her ability to adapt to the changing landscape of Hollywood was evident in her seamless transition from silent films to talkies. Her first sound film, The Trespasser, 1929, was a commercial success and earned her another Academy Award nomination. This film showcased her vocal talent and proved she could excel in the new era of sound films. By the end of the 1920s, Swanson had established herself as a Hollywood icon. Her influence extended beyond the screen. She was a fashion trendsetter and a symbol of the glamorous lifestyle associated with Hollywood's elite. Her relationships with powerful men, including Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., added to her mystique and kept her in the public eye. The Secret Romance with Herbert K. Somborn Her marriage to Herbert K. Somborn in December 1919 was a significant event in her life. Somborn, a prominent figure in the film industry, was the president of Equity Pictures Corporation and co-owner of the Brown Derby Restaurant in Los Angeles. Their union was more than just a personal relationship. It was a merger of two influential figures in Hollywood. They were often seen together at high-profile events, but their romance was not without its secrets. Swanson, already a major star, found herself entangled in a whirlwind of professional and personal commitments. Despite this, the couple married in a private ceremony, aiming to keep the details of their relationship out of the public eye. Her career continued to flourish during her marriage to Somborn. She starred in several hit films, including Something to Think About, 1920, and The Affairs of Anatol, 1921. Her popularity soared, and she became known for her elegance and sophistication both on and off the screen. However, the demands of her career often clashed with her personal life, creating tensions in her marriage. In 1920, Swanson gave birth to their daughter, Gloria Swanson Somborn. Despite the joy of motherhood, she faced numerous challenges balancing her career and family life. Somborn's busy schedule and her frequent film shoots added strain to their relationship. She later reflected on this period, stating, I was trying to be a good wife and mother, 
but the pressures of Hollywood were overwhelming. Their marriage was marked by rumors and scandals. In 1921, Somborn filed for divorce, citing allegations of infidelity. The media frenzy that followed put her in the spotlight for reasons beyond her film career. Somborn claimed Swanson had numerous affairs, including one with actor Rudolph Valentino. She denied these accusations, calling them baseless and hurtful. The divorce proceedings were contentious and highly publicized. Somborn sought custody of their daughter and demanded a significant financial settlement. Swanson, determined to protect her reputation and her child, fought back in court. The legal battle revealed intimate details of their relationship, further fueling public interest. Despite the turmoil, she remained focused on her career. She continued to deliver powerful performances, demonstrating her resilience and dedication to her craft. In 1922, she starred in Beyond the Rocks alongside Valentino, a film that became a box office success despite the controversies surrounding her personal life. The divorce was finalized in 1923, with Swanson retaining custody of their daughter and agreeing to a financial settlement with Somborn. The end of their marriage marked a turning point in her life. She emerged stronger and more determined to succeed in Hollywood. Reflecting on her marriage to Somborn, Swanson once said, It was a learning experience. I realized that I had to navigate my personal and professional life with equal care. The affair with Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., one of the most talked about and significant affairs in Gloria Swanson's life, was with Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., the patriarch of the Kennedy family and father of future President John F. Kennedy. Their relationship began in the late 1920s when Kennedy, a successful businessman and financier, entered the Hollywood scene. Kennedy was introduced to her in 1927 when he was seeking to expand his business empire into the film industry. He became the head of Pathé Exchange, a film distribution company, and saw an opportunity to work with her, one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Their professional relationship quickly turned personal, leading to a passionate and secret affair. At the time, she was married to her third husband, the Marquis Henri de la Falaise. Despite her marriage, Swanson and Kennedy carried on their affair discreetly, managing to keep it hidden from the public for a considerable time. She later recounted, Joe was magnetic and persuasive. He had a way of making you feel like the most important person in the world. Kennedy's influence in her life extended beyond their romance. He took a keen interest in her career, becoming her financial advisor and business partner. Kennedy helped Swanson produce the film Queen Kelly in 1928, directed by Eric von Stroheim. The film was highly ambitious but faced numerous production challenges, leading to financial losses. Kennedy's involvement in Queen Kelly was both a professional and personal endeavor, as he sought to manage her career and finances. Swanson's relationship with Kennedy was marked by a blend of business acumen and romantic passion. Kennedy's financial support and advice helped her navigate the complexities of Hollywood, but their affair also brought emotional turbulence. She later described their relationship as a mix of intense passion and pragmatic decisions. Their affair, however, was not without its consequences. Kennedy's wife, Rose Kennedy, was aware of her husband's infidelities, but the relationship with her was particularly scandalous due to its high-profile nature. Despite this, Kennedy and Swanson continued their liaison, managing to maintain a facade of professionalism in public. The end of their affair came abruptly in 1930. Kennedy decided to sever ties with her, both personally and professionally. The breakup was sudden and left her feeling betrayed. In her autobiography, she wrote, Joe ended it without warning. It was like a business deal gone sour, with no regard for the emotions involved. The Scandal with Henri de la Falaise In 1925, Gloria Swanson married the French aristocrat Henri de la Falaise. Henri was not only a nobleman, but also an aspiring film director. Their marriage came on the heels of her tumultuous divorce from Herbert K. Somborn and marked a significant change in her personal and professional life. Swanson and de la Falaise met while she was still married to Somborn. Their connection was immediate and intense, leading to a whirlwind romance. The marriage was held in Paris on January 28, 1925, in a lavish ceremony that was covered extensively by the press. She later recalled, It was a fairy tale, and I was the princess. Henri de la Falaise was charming and cultured, bringing a sense of European sophistication to her life. 
Their marriage, however, was far from idyllic. Swanson's demanding career and Henri's own ambitions in the film industry often kept them apart. Despite these challenges, the couple made efforts to maintain their relationship, with Henri supporting her career in Hollywood. One of the most significant scandals during their marriage involved the production of the film The Loves of Sunya, 1927. She starred in and produced the film, which was directed by Albert Parker. Henri de la Falaise worked closely on the project, and their collaboration was both personal and professional. During this period, rumors of infidelity began to surface. Swanson was linked to several high-profile figures in Hollywood, including the legendary director Raoul Walsh. Although there was no concrete evidence, the gossip tabloids thrived on the speculation, adding pressure to her marriage. The strain of Queen Kelly took a toll on Swanson and Henri's marriage, the project's failure and the subsequent financial loss were devastating. She later admitted, It was a disaster on all fronts. Henri and I were drifting apart and the film's collapse was the final blow. Their marriage officially ended in 1930, following the completion of Queen Kelly. The divorce was relatively quiet compared to her previous separation, but it marked the end of another significant chapter in her life. Henri de la Falaise returned to France after the divorce and later remarried actress Constance Bennett. Swanson, on the other hand, continued to work in Hollywood and eventually transitioned into the new era of talkies. Reflecting on her marriage to Henri, she said, We were from two different worlds, and in the end, those worlds couldn't coexist. The Secretive Liaison with Michael Farmer In 1931, Gloria Swanson entered into a relationship with Michael Farmer, a man who would become her fourth husband. Farmer was a wealthy Irish sportsman known for his charm and good looks. Their romance began under a veil of secrecy, largely due to her desire to avoid public scrutiny after her previous high-profile relationships. She met Farmer at a time when she was dealing with the aftermath of her breakup with Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. and the failure of Queen Kelly. She sought stability and companionship, which she found in Farmer. Their relationship quickly became serious, and by 1931, Swanson discovered she was pregnant. The news of her pregnancy added urgency to their situation, leading to a quick marriage on August 16, 1931, in Yuma, Arizona. The marriage to Farmer was not publicly announced until after the ceremony, reflecting her desire for privacy. She later explained, I wanted a fresh start away from the prying eyes of Hollywood. Michael offered that escape. Despite her hopes for a peaceful life, the marriage was far from smooth. Their son, Michael Mickey Farmer Jr., was born on December 5, 1932. The birth of her son brought her immense joy, but it also highlighted the growing rift between her and Farmer. Swanson's demanding career and Farmer's discomfort with her fame created a strain in their relationship. In her autobiography, she reflected, Michael was a good man, but he wasn't prepared for the realities of my world. As the years passed, Farmer's dissatisfaction grew. He began spending more time away from home, engaging in activities that took him far from Hollywood. Swanson, meanwhile, continued to work on various film projects, determined to maintain her career. This physical and emotional distance only worsened their marital problems. By 1934, the marriage was in serious trouble. Swanson and Farmer separated and their divorce was finalized in 1935. The split was relatively amicable, with both parties agreeing that they were better off apart. She retained custody of their son and Farmer returned to his life in Ireland. Reflecting on her marriage to Michael Farmer, Swanson later said, It was a time of learning and growth. Michael and I were two very different people and while our love was genuine, our worlds were too far apart. The Rumored Affair with Raoul Walsh During the height of her career, Gloria Swanson's life was filled with rumors and speculation, one of the most persistent being her alleged affair with director Raoul Walsh. Walsh was a prominent figure in Hollywood, known for his work on films such as The Thief of Baghdad, 1924, and What Price Glory, 1926. The rumors of an affair between Swanson and Walsh began circulating in the late 1920s, during a time when both were at the peak of their careers. They first worked together on the film Sadie Thompson, 1928, in which Swanson played the lead role. The film, based on a short story by W. Somerset Maugham, was a significant success and showcased her dramatic abilities. Walsh directed the film and also played a supporting role, bringing him into close contact with her during the production. The chemistry between Swanson and Walsh was evident on screen and off, 
leading to widespread speculation about a romantic relationship. The nature of their interactions on set, combined with the intensity of the film's production, fueled these rumors. Although neither she nor Walsh ever publicly confirmed the affair, Hollywood insiders and gossip columns were rife with stories about their alleged romance. One of the more notable aspects of their rumored affair was its potential impact on Swanson's career. At the time, she was navigating a series of personal and professional challenges, including the fallout from her failed marriage to Henri de la Falaise and the financial difficulties following Queen Kelly. An affair with a director like Walsh could have had significant repercussions for her reputation and career. The alleged affair with Walsh was one of many rumors that surrounded Swanson during her time in Hollywood. While some insiders believed the stories, others dismissed them as mere gossip, a common occurrence in the highly competitive and image-conscious environment of the film industry. The Fling with Herbert Marshall Among the many romantic entanglements in Gloria Swanson's life was her brief but passionate affair with British actor Herbert Marshall. Known for his suave demeanor and distinctive voice, Marshall was a prominent figure in Hollywood during the 1930s. Their relationship, though short-lived, was marked by intense emotions and professional collaboration. Swanson and Marshall met on the set of the film Tonight or Never, 1931, a romantic comedy that showcased their on-screen chemistry. Directed by Mervyn Leroy, the film featured her as a temperamental opera singer and Marshall as her love interest. Their interactions on set were electric, and it wasn't long before their professional relationship turned into a romantic liaison. At the time, Swanson was married to Michael Farmer, but their marriage was already strained due to her demanding career and Farmer's discomfort with Hollywood's spotlight. Marshall, who had his own share of personal issues, found solace in her company. The two shared a deep connection, fueled by their mutual respect and admiration for each other's talent. Their affair was discreet, kept out of the public eye to avoid scandal. Swanson later reflected on their time together, stating, Herbert was a gentleman in every sense. Our connection was brief, but meaningful. Despite their efforts to keep the affair secret, Hollywood insiders and gossip columns occasionally hinted at their relationship. During their time together, Swanson and Marshall enjoyed each other's company, both on and off the set. They attended social events, dined at exclusive restaurants, and spent quiet evenings discussing their careers and personal aspirations. Their relationship, however, was not destined to last. The pressures of their respective careers and personal lives eventually took their toll. By late 1932, they decided to end their affair. Swanson's focus shifted back to her family and her son, Michael Farmer Jr., while Marshall continued to build his career in Hollywood. Despite the end of their romantic relationship, they remained friends and respected colleagues. Their brief fling left a lasting impression on both, influencing their subsequent relationships and careers. Marshall's career continued to thrive, with notable roles in films such as Trouble in Paradise, 1932, and The Letter, 1940. Swanson, on the other hand, navigated the challenges of her personal life while maintaining her status as a Hollywood icon the alleged romance with Rod LaRock. In the early 1920s, Gloria Swanson and Rod LaRock, another leading figure in Hollywood, were rumored to be romantically involved. LaRock was a charming and handsome actor known for his roles in silent films and later talkies. The speculation surrounding their relationship began during the filming of The Hummingbird, 1924, a movie that paired them as the romantic leads. Swanson and LaRock shared a natural on-screen chemistry that quickly sparked rumors of an off-screen romance. The film, directed by Sidney Olcott, required them to portray intense romantic scenes, further fueling the gossip. Hollywood insiders and fans alike were captivated by the idea of a real-life romance between the two stars. Their alleged relationship, however, was never confirmed by either her or LaRock. Both maintained a professional stance, focusing on their work and avoiding public discussion of their private lives. Swanson, in particular, was cautious about her public image, having already faced scrutiny from previous relationships. Despite the lack of confirmation, the rumors persisted. Their interactions on and off the set were closely watched, with every gesture and glance analyzed for signs of a romantic connection. They were often seen together at Hollywood events and parties, adding to the speculation. 
One of the most talked about incidents occurred during the filming of The Hummingbird. According to reports, they shared a passionate kiss that seemed too real to be just acting. Crew members and onlookers were convinced that there was something more between them. Swanson later commented on their working relationship, saying, Rod was a consummate professional, and we had a wonderful rapport on set. LaRock, who was equally tight-lipped about their alleged romance, continued to build his career in Hollywood. He married actress Vilma Banky in 1927, a union that seemed to put an end to the rumors about him and Swanson. The marriage was highly publicized and was considered one of Hollywood's most glamorous unions at the time. Swanson, meanwhile, moved on to other projects and relationships. Her ability to maintain her focus on her career, despite the constant rumors, was a testament to her professionalism and resilience. She continued to deliver outstanding performances, earning critical acclaim and maintaining her status as a leading lady in Hollywood.